The ViewSonic TD1655 is a 15.6 inch Full HD portable display. It's basically a second monitor designed with simple connectivity and flexibility in mind. The target market, according to ViewSonic, is remote workers, business travelers, and digital nomads. It does feel a little specialist and niche, but with a massive increase in home working, particularly since March 2020, this, this kind of display has come into its own. It's nice to have a big workstation set up from home with kind of plumbed in monitors and laptop docks, but that's just not reality. Many people move their workspace around the house either because of necessity or simply to have a change of scenery and just try out a new spot. The TD1655 is absolutely perfect for this and can be connected with just one cable and placed next to your computer on whichever surface happens to be your desk for that day. It can be used in both landscape and portrait mode and it has full touchscreen capability. Today, I'm gonna to take a look at the pros and cons of the TD1655 and hopefully give you an idea as to whether it's right for you. Before I do that, let's run through what's in the box and cover the technical specs and give you just an objective overview of the product. It's important to point out here that ViewSonic sent me this display for review purposes. However, this is not an advert. All my opinions are entirely my own and I always make it clear to partners that I create honest reviews and don't produce content scripted by third parties. ViewSonic were entirely happy with that approach. The display was shipped to me in a practical solid brown box. This isn't pretty retail packaging, but it is very well done and everything is held securely in place. In the box, you get a magnetic snap-on display cover, which is like a cover that reminds me of the sort of covers you get on uh, iPads and other high-end tablets. You naturally get the display itself. ViewSonic also provides a metal stylus, a high-capacity USB-C power supply, an HDMI to HDMI mini cable, or mini HDMI cable, a USB-C to USB-C right-angled cable, and a USB-A to USB-C cable. Technical specs wise, the display is an LED lit 1920 by 1080 full HD IPS panel. It's got a six bit color space and a response time of 14 milliseconds. IO wise, it's got two USB-C inputs, one mini HDMI and one headphone out. Power consumption is between six and 10 watts depending on what mode you've got it set in at the time. Touchscreen is capacitive 10 point and it does have internal speakers, both of which are 0.8 watts each. Weight-wise, it's one kilo. I've been working at home since March 2020, and I use a display similar to this every day. My productivity is hugely improved with a second screen, and I would never work without one. When I received the TD1655 in the mail, I swapped out my other display for this one, and I've been using it every day for the last couple of weeks. I haven't tried to do anything fancy with it, because I wanted this review to be from the perspective of a remote worker using the display for precisely that. So let's look at what I like and what I don't like about the ViewSonic TD1655. The display, well, I've got to give the panel a mixed review, but there are definitely some good aspects. It's sufficiently bright, and it is an IPS panel, so it has a wide viewing angle, which is surprisingly useful with this type of monitor. If you're using it with colleagues and you're in a kind of breakout meeting environment where you're all around a small table, having a wide viewing angle on a display that where you might be sharing some content is really, really useful. It's also a decent size at 15.6 inches and certainly on the larger side of this type of product and even other tablets too. This is one of the best looking portable displays of this type that I have seen. The glossy touchscreen is housed in an all-metal casing and it's virtually bezel-free on three sides with the lower edge having a wider bezel. Now, initially this sounds a little bit strange, but it makes sense for the screen to be raised up by a couple of centimeters at the base because the base sits on your desk. So it only takes a kind of mouse or a book or a phone to be in front of the display and you're blocking off the bottom of your screen. When you see it, it makes perfect sense for that bezel to be a little bit wider than the others. It is the right choice. 
Many portable displays use their case as the stand and they have a kind of magnetic flap on the back which sort of holds the display up. And this sort of works okay, but it's nowhere near as secure and doesn't provide the same angle of adjustment as the method that ViewSonic have used. They have a solid sheet of metal on the back and it's hinged to the, to the back, which opens out and can provide up to 60 degrees of adjustment. It's really an excellent system and it allows the, the uh, display to be stood up free from its case. As mentioned, this is a fully metal display. At one kilogram, it feels substantial, a little bit like carrying a kind of MacBook Air or something like that. Uh, the stand is attached with three metal hinges, each of which have three individual screws securing them to the body. The ports are, are feel, they feel well built and, you know, they feel nice when you connect cables to them. They don't feel particularly flimsy, so they do feel like they're built to last. The 10-point capacitive touchscreen works better than I expected. It's responsive and accurate, and although it's not something really I would use regularly, it would be a perfect partner with a touchscreen laptop. All monitor functions can be accessed through one joystick on the rear of the unit. Now, these are always a little bit fiddly to use, and the monitor interface is the same sort of old fashioned looking monitor interface that's been on monitors since like the 1980s, but I much prefer this control method to having the buttons down the side and trying to feel your way around and figure out what's going on. It's much simpler to find one joystick on the back and just go from there. Accessory-wise, ViewSonic supplies this with not only all the cables you need, which is really surprising for a monitor, it's also they also provide a, a decent USB-C power pack and a metal stylus which comes complete with a spare nib as well that's almost worthy of the Wacom name. It's very nice. I'd expect any portable monitor these days to support USB-C, but I still get a little bit of a thrill by both powering and sending display data down one cable. I don't know why, but it's just so neat and tidy and it takes no time at all to set up in the morning. The TD1655 actually comes with two USB-C ports, so maybe you can power through one and then send display data through the other one. Um, or alternatively, you can like charge your phone. You know, if you've got enough power coming into one of them, you can charge your phone off the other one. There's various options with having two USB-C versus just one. Moving back to the display, I'm going to come back to this IPS panel a bit. Just, just briefly, because the TD1655 is designed for business users, and, and it is okay for that. However, as displays go, this isn't an incredibly vibrant or accurate one. You're not going to want to edit photos on this anytime soon. Colours look a little bit lacklustre and muted on this display. Again, I must stress that this really isn't a deal breaker, and it's not something that impacted my work like at all, but it is worth knowing about. It could also do with being a little bit brighter and sharper. Next to my work laptop, which is the ThinkPad uh, P50, the two kind of match up quite nicely. But if you have one of these, you know, one of these laptops that has a brilliant bright screen and you like to use it that way, this might look sort of like a bit of a poor second best when put side by side. Price wise, if you're running this through a business, the price is probably going to be a bit less of a concern to you. But if you're a private individual, or you may be just a sole trader, £300 for, a, for an HD display seems like a lot when you consider that iPads start at just a little bit more than that, and they compact with not only a better screen with a better resolution, but they're also an iPad. So yeah, it is a little bit expensive, but on the flip side of that argument, the build quality of the ViewSonic does go some way to making the price feel fair. And as I always say in lots of my videos, this is a tool to do a job. I don't want to tie up my iPad as a second display all day. This is designed to do one thing and it does it well. Speakers wise, well, they're okay. <laughs> they're okay if you've got nothing else, but I'll, I'll just leave it at that and avoid them whenever possible. When you look at what other manufacturers, no names mentioned, achieve in similarly slim housings, I was hoping for better. Again though, how often do I ever need speakers on my second display at work? Never, so not a big deal. Portrait mode, finally, is a good bonus. It's a nice bonus to have, 
but it's always going to be a bit messy because your cables, when you rotate the screen, your cables come out of the top. Now, they provide a right-angled USB-C connector, as I mentioned, and this definitely helps here. But tucking the cables down the back of the monitor isn't that straightforward. And, of course, you've got to have that particular cable with you. If you want to use a USB-C for power and mini HDMI combo, just forget it. It's just incredibly cumbersome. Maybe having the US one of the USB-C ports on the kind of like bottom, the lower rear right hand side would help, but I don't know. I'm not an engineer. There might be good reasons why it just can't be there. I focus primarily on business use in my review. But the ViewSonic TD1655 really is a versatile bit of kit. It does slot nicely into business use, but it's worth considering something like this for home use or maybe for using, you know, with, with a phone. I use one of these as an extra display with my main editing PC. Uh, they're just so sleek and they take up so little space on your desk that they just yeah, they leave you with so much more free desk space than any other display solution, really. In short, they can be used for anything where you need a display that's compact and easy to set up. Getting a bit geeky, I tried connecting the HDMI loop out of my Atomos recorder here in the studio, and it gave me like a really nice, clear, sizable tertiary display to position right in front of me when filming, which, which was great. I also hooked it up to a CCTV PVR to give me a permanent way of monitoring cameras, and that worked well too. It's a reasonably expensive monitor, but it is broadly in line with the market, so don't expect this kind of quality for anything less anywhere else. I do wish, however, that they'd chosen a better panel to use with this one. As mentioned, it's not essential for business users, but I do feel it's kind of let down what is otherwise a premium product. Sorry for using another Apple reference here, but it's like the new Mac MacBook still having that 720p webcam. In short, would I buy this? For my day job, absolutely, it works perfectly. Should you buy this? Well, if display accuracy is, in, is, is critical to you, you should probably shop around and look for something better suited. However, if you want something that looks really sleek, really clean, professional, and is well built, this would be a great choice. It's a little pricey, but consider this an investment into working smarter and being more productive. Thank you very much for watching. Please leave any questions or feedback in the comments. I will try to answer as soon as I can and I'll speak to you soon.